Clean water is something that we often take for granted, but making it can be a major technological and energy-intensive process. Now, researcher Thomas Cooper at York University in Toronto has come up with a clever way to clean up water and even cook food and drive other chemical reactions at the same time using sunlight. Essentially, we have a structure that is a few centimeters above a body of water, and that structure is a very efficient absorber of solar energy. So when it absorbs solar energy, the structure heats up, and then that heat is conducted through the structure itself onto the bottom surface. And that surface is specifically designed to re-radiate that energy towards the water below. The device is composed of several layers arranged like a sandwich. The upper layer is a dark color and efficiently harvests the energy in visible light landing on the upper surface. This energy is channeled into the center of the sandwich where a carbon-rich sponge soaks it up and becomes hot. The heat leaves the device from the lower surface in the form of infrared waves that water absorbs very well. The types of photons that come from the sun aren't absorbed very well by water, but the types of photons that this structure emits are very readily absorbed directly by the water surface. So we're achieving this energy transfer, which is essentially consisting of first absorbing the sunlight and then re-emitting that energy as longer wavelength thermal radiation towards the water. This has the effect of constantly evaporating water vapor or steam from the water's surface. This vapor rises up into the device, the lower surface of which is composed of a hollow grill. As it passes through, the water vapor picks up even more heat. The device is actually a little bit hotter than that water surface, so it could be on the order of 30 degrees hotter than the water surface. Now, as this vapor flows um, through the structure, it actually increases in temperature. And this is what we call superheated vapor. And then this superheated vapor flows through the device into a single outlet tube where we can collect it and then use it for these downstream processes. The resulting stream of superheated water vapor can then be used for a range of purposes. Our ability to produce steam at a higher temperature opens the door to many other potential applications. We can use that steam for things like cooking. So you can think of um, cooking in a remote area, um, using this steam rather than burning things like fossil fuels or coal, um, which is quite polluting um, to perform your cooking activities. You can also think of this superheated steam, this high temperature steam, as being used for cleaning processes. And there's also many industrial processes, for example, drying of different materials or um, production of different chemicals that require these heat at these elevated temperatures. Um, so we think that this ability to um, heat the steam above 100 degrees Celsius really opens the door to these additional applications. And afterwards, of course, the water vapour can be condensed to produce a supply of fresh, clean water ready for drinking. This device produces two and a half litres of water per day for a, a one square metre footprint. And that would be in, in a relatively sunny location, something typical of continental United States. If you wanted to operate it in a less sunny climate, the nice thing with this device is you can always scale it up in terms of area. If you wanted to produce, let's say, twice as much steam or water per day, you could just scale up that footprint by a factor of two. That was Thomas Cooper from York University in Toronto, and this work was published in Nature Communications.